welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, new webcam position. Tell me how much you love it. And we're also taking a look at a Jund Warrior aggro list that Jamie Topples played in the Mythic Invitational. I have seen the list here and there. I think that Frank Karsten had a similar deck going into the Mythic Championship in Cleveland. And it's a fun deck. I got to up close and personal witness the power of Status Statue and Goblin Chain Whirler as it wiped out an entire field of red creatures and nearly... Uh, nearly uh, demolished uh, the person I was cheering for. Uh, but with that in mind, <laughs> it's still an extremely fun thing to do. Status Statue can be cast with a green source to destroy an artifact, creature, or enchantment, but with either a black or red source, plus one, plus one, and death touch line to turn. Put that on a Chain Whirler, you kill all of your opponent's creatures. Put an Angrath on the field, and you're just awesome. Two Angraths hiding out in the deck, everybody's favorite... Rakdos Planeswalker by far, no fire, and no steel. Also a fine finality to keep the party rolling with some Rixmati Revelers. Four copies of Gutter Bones. So what ties this insane mana base together that it can play Triple Red Chain Whirler as well as all these other cards? Well, the answer is Unclaimed Territory. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana to cast a creature spell of your type, but CGB all these different creatures. What type could they possibly have in common? Warriors, come out to play. Ogre, warrior. Goblin, warrior. Elf, crab, warrior. Elf, warrior. Elf, warrior. And skeleton, yes, you guessed it by now, warrior. Ixmati Reveler, you're going to have to just be your own thing, being a human shaman. And Rekindling Phoenix, you're too good not to have here. The rest of the deck, um, yeah, I guess we covered everything in the deck. The mana base, every land produces red except for three, and those are overgrown tombs to help cast the other spells in the deck. And that's okay. The deck runs 25 land. If you want triple red on turn three, over 80-some percent of the time, you want the... You need 22 red sources. Consult mana base articles by Frank Karsten. Quote them in chat. Show how smart you are. And of course, correct me every time I'm wrong. Thank you very much, and let's go play some games. As I climb those gold ranks, I'm putting it all on the line again with another fun off-the-internet brew that I haven't played much of. But alas... The entertainment is the most important. What we fear most, we don't have another red source for the Chain Whirler, but nearly any land we draw should do that job. In the meantime, we have a sweet curve with Gutter Bones and the Guardian. So let's keep this mighty beat downy hand. And here comes a Simic Guild Gate, so we're gonna have to get busy and get busy fast. We definitely want to play the Blood Crypt on the chance that we draw the extra red source for the Chain Whirler on time and need to play it. Although against Gates, it's hard to say if that's actually going to be a thing. So we'll go with the Crag and go with the Growth Chamber Guardian and hope to dodge a Plaza of Harmony Gates Ablaze, which would be, as they say, the nuts. Growth Spiral. Our opponent will slam that Plaza of Harmony, gain three life, but they are missing another land, which Maybe. So you're telling me there's a chance. We're going to pump the Growth Chamber Guardian right away as opposed to just deploying any other creatures because we want this bigger than a Gates Ablaze. And then we're going to slam for damage. Yes, we had Spectacle, but very little we could do with it. Rich Mati Reveler doesn't want to discard all these cards. What we most need is a land off the top for Rekindling Phoenix. If we can get that... Our opponent may have a very hard time recovering. And there's a guild summit with no land, but we are in the same boat without a land to play. So let's get straight to the beatings. Playing another Growth Chamber Guardian here threatens lethal for next turn, and I think that's exactly where I want to be. The Rixamati Reveler drawing a card could hit a land and also play a Guardian. It smells greedy to me, though. The opponent will burn a Gates Ablaze which they had to have to stave off death. But now here with the land off the top, it looks like it's going to be a rekindling phoenix. And that makes Gates of Blaze much worse. So 
So, warriors, come out to play. And if the opponent takes even one more bump from the Rekindling Phoenix, the Goblin Chain Whirler's two damage, one damage, will be enough to finish the job. Even a Gates of Blaze here won't kill the Growth Chamber Guardian. So the opponent needs a miracle. That moment of silence. Get your Fs ready in the chat. Gamers. Here's a Hydrant Crisis for one. A very sad baby Crisis will face the wrath of the Goblin Chain Whirler. And that's all she wrote. This hand is interesting because it has the combo and the mana to play it, but it also has just a Pelt Collector with four lands, so... Uh, it could be a good hand against an aggro deck, and we are on the draw. Let's see what happens here. Let's play with this. So do we slam a Pelt Collector on one? That land off the top is very concerning, as the Flood is certainly on. But yeah, I think we'll just go for the Pelt Collector. Who knows, we could draw a really solid curve from this point forward. A Rix Mahdi Reveler to, su to smooth the hand would be good. A Growth Chamber Guardian would be very good. And here's Seeker Squire. So the opponent was something to get in the way. And it looks like they are some kind of a Mardu creature deck. Which could be very... Which it, I mean, that's good for us that our opponent is at least playing some creatures to put our Goblin Chain Whirler to good work. Let's go ahead and play a Stomping Ground Tapped and nothing else, as the hand is not getting happier. Two straight lands off the top when you keep a four lander is a bit of a nightmare. We're really going to need a Goblin Chain Whirler combo to somehow carry this day, but I don't know what we're up against yet. Secret Squire into Seraph is not what I see every day, and the opponent is done for the turn. So I could play Goblin Chain Whirler just to grow the Pell Collector, but I like keeping the combo. So, our opponent is obviously on a, some kind of a creature plan. We want to we want to maximize it. So, I'll play this land tapped. We can now play the Chain Whirler off a triple red, which any other card in our hand, any other land in our hand produces, and the Status Statue can be cast off the Overgrown Tomb. Here's the Seraph. I hope Seraph's ready to go one on one with the red one, the Rekindling Phoenix. If I have more wrestling references than normal, it's because it's WrestleMania weekend. And it is very hard for me to get off the wrestling references once I start. If you smell what I'm cooking. And let's throw it on back. And we'll see how the opponent can deal with the Phoenix. Did they bring a Vraska's Contempt to the party? Are they prepared? Also, if our Phoenix dies, it triggers Pelt Collector again. So, there's plenty of reasons here to block with the Phoenix when the Seraph attacks. I most certainly think I will. And we'll see what our opponent, who we could call some pie-eating jabroni or something like that from the Attitude Era, wants to do. Well, a Basilica Bell Hunt. I certainly have lands I'm happy to discard. But three life is a bit of an annoying one. However, our opponent's setting up for this sweet goblin chainsy whirlsies. And no attacks. So I could send the Phoenix and go for the Chain Whirler combo. The opponent has their mana down right now, so they can't mortify it, which is probably a good reason to. We could also do it before that and attack with the Pelt Collector, which this will be a 3-3, and the opponent will have two 1-1s, one -ones, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I think I like that the most. So when executing the combo, turn on full control mode. So that your ability sticks when the Chain Whirler enters the battlefield. So there should be a pause here. And now we can cast Status Statue. Target Alvin Chain Whirler, submit. Everything goes a little slower in full control mode. And Pelt Collector will resolve. We can turn off the control mode now. Hit the resolve button and watch the things die. It must be painful for the opponent because it's an extremely slow motion way of uh, making this happen. <laughs> it's like, yes, I know what's happening, but every click takes a bit of time. The opponent keeping their 1-1s. I wonder if they run a Kaya's Wrath. 
No, Kai's Wrath would mean that they would definitely block with at least one of them. So what are they saving them for? Another Seraph of the Scales makes its way to the battlefield. Now we have some interesting attack options. I do, of course, want to attack with Phoenix. Goblin Chain Whirler's first strike means it will be safe in an attack, but am I willing to trade my Pelt Collector? If the opponent blocks with the Seraph and I lose the Pelt Collector, then they have four 1-1s, which can stall these for some time. And if the Pelt Collector gets bigger by, say, the Phoenix dying, it does gain Trample. So I think for now, I want to keep my Pelt Collector. The opponent doesn't seem to have removal up their sleeve, at least not at this time. Just more bodies. And possibly more land in hand as well, as they have also played a bit of a floody game. Some blocks here do indicate that we might be running into some kind of a board wipe. So do I play out the Gutter Bones? I think I will hold the Gutter Bones. Also, my opponent runs Basilica Bell Haunt, and I don't have a use for anything beyond six mana. So this land is going to live in my hand for probably the rest of the game, unless I have to discard it because of a Bell Haunt. And the play is, oh, Kaya. Oh no. Well, that exiles the Rekindling Phoenix. The opponent can also minus the Kaya to exile the O1. So there's two ways to do it. I like the plus one and gaining life though much more. Leaving me with an O1 doesn't do much. Then Pelt Collector is going to come. Oh, I'm stunned. What do you think, team? Is this all part of their plan to keep the Kaya alive by chump blocking with the one ones? Or did they miss that? All the more reason to be careful with the gutter bones here. If it ended up in the graveyard from Akaya's Wrath and got exiled, that would get, I would lose some of my recursive threat ability. I will, however, go for the Thorn Lieutenant. It can be very beefy right now. So I keep playing against Akaya's Wrath, but all we've seen are creatures in Kaya. However, it does feel like there's a bit of a setup going on. Akaya's Wrath here, and then the Kaya Plus would exile the Rekindling Phoenix so it wouldn't come back. Losing the Gutter Bones in that case would be a bit of a tragic tale. Alas, though, they're down to one card, and I think that they've had windows to play it. So this is it, the big test. Do they have it? If they do, it's going to be very hard for me to win. I would need a perfect draw off the top like a Rekindling Phoenix or a Find Finality to get back at least some of my dead creatures. If we see the 1-1 one, one attack, we can begin sobbing into a blanket. It's the Bell Haunt. I suppose I should have played out the Rootbound Craig in that case. That's a my bad. We'll even oops that one. And the opponent is in the tank here. They have one more card and they're not sure if they want to play it. Feels like a land. And their Kaya is sizing up what's happening on the board and goes after the Gutter Bones. Okay. Goblin Chain Whirler. Well, we'll play that first because the first strike damage means we can attack with our 3-3 Goblin Chain Whirler. We can't attack with the Thorn Lieutenant, though. But it also kills the Kaya, so pretty easy mode. I'm gonna make myself scarce. Send those two. The opponent can't block with the Bell Haunt because the first strike damage would kill the Bell Haunt. Well, they could block with it. They would just be throwing their Bell Haunt away. And here's the Eldest Reborn. So, I think I'll just lose the Phoenix, since it comes back. The opponent hasn't shown anything like an ability to reach out and kill this with a cheap removal spell, and they do scoop it up. Next game! Our curve is Pelt Collector, nothing, Spellbreaker, or Chain Whirler, Phoenix. I'll take it. That looks fun. So we have to lead on the territory, naming Warrior, slamming the Pelt Collector, and it's off to the races. The little elf that grows up big and strong. It's not a two drop. It would have been nice to, to rip one off the top of the deck, but we'll have to settle for slamming for one little damage. One little damage. The great elf warrior is loose. Stop, stop, or I'll skin you alive. It's 
animated Return of the King, which probably nobody watching is going to remember. Put it in chat if you remember. So, Goblin Chain Whirler can grow the Pelt Collector and wipe out the Branch Walker. That is an option. I do think we should push for damage. Our opponent on Saltai, giving them time is always a big mistake. Uh, the Chain Whirler could get a lot better, but we don't have a status statue, and we don't see Llanowar Elves, and some versions have cut that card, so we're going to go straight to Chain Town. And go for damage as quickly as we can. Let's play the beatdown roll. Rekindling Phoenix, one of the best cards in the matchup. Just all at pound for pound. Probably the most solid card in the deck, in the best of one format, can be very hard to deal with. And having two of them feels good. Watery Grave. Tapped. Pass. Perhaps a cast down in our future. Well, we need to play, or we should play, our Rekindling Phoenix first to plus our Pelt Collector. We could also play a Grill Spellbreaker to plus the Pelt Collector. And that gets more damage in faster. Plus the Phoenix again will grow it next turn, but so would second Phoenix. Let's see, knocking the opponent to 10 and then playing the bird. It also might draw Vraska's Contempt out of our opponent before we play the bird, which that could be very, very good. Let's go for it. Haste it up. Get him in there. Here comes the trophy or the cast down or the something. Okay. Get me the last mountain from the deck. Beat him up. And now we can play a tap land. I don't think it matters which one we play. So I'll get the blood crypt down as it casts some more of my spells. Although I guess the green source would be good for a staff statue later. And if I had to discard it here to some discard element, I'd feel bad. Jade Light Ranger with a mana open. I guess the opponent needed the second green, but they are in big trouble. There's a Contempt on top, and they've been the Contempt. Okay. Well, all this fodder just gets in the way. We need to do damage, and we need to do it fast. Let's see if we can make our opponent re regret that bin of the Vra of the Vraska's Contempt. It does likely mean they have another. But we will make them have it. The flood is getting a little bit too real for my taste. But the game is still very close. Here's the contempt. Just remember, opponent, you could have had a second one. Let's see if we can punish them hard. They've had a very defensive draw so far. They've had the trophy and the contempt. Just a few explorer things to throw in the way. Will it be good enough to stall them to, vic to get stabilized? No, it will not. They've scooped up with five, six cards in hand, so I'm guessing none of those fly or deal with the rekindling phoenix. This hand has Terminal and Gutter Bones to turn to Reveler or Lightning Strike, and if we hit a land, uh, the Chain Whirler probably can't be cast because of the Overgrown Tomb, so that's it's a little worrisome. But we can discard it to the Reveler, and hopefully Chain Whirler can live his best life sometime later. Gabo Gabo. Being on the draw, though, it's pretty scary. Your Gutter Bones might never get in there, your Grizzly Bear might not matter. Away we go. Another Gutter Bones off the top is interesting. We could discard it to the Reveler, knowing that we might be able to return it to our hand later with, with Spectacle, and then we could hang on to our Chain Whirler, but I don't know if that matters. This is interesting. We have the option of Pelt Collector into Gutter Bones, and we are against a Jeskai deck. So, not quite sure what that means. There's no stick on the board, so our opponent may have a counter spell. Let's see what they do. No? They also could have a Deafening Clarion, which at least we get our Gutter Bones back. At some point, perhaps. Still, I think we just go for the pressure, and the opponent's just 
thrilled to do that. All right. Well, this is rough because I don't have the land, but I, I'm i confident I should run out the Guardian, make the opponent find a way to kill it. Ouch. That's very painful. Go, Growth Chamber Guardian! Our opponent might want a Chemist's Insight here, so despite the fact that they could have counter magic, I simply have to run out this Reveler to try to hit my land drop. And it resolves. So we can drop off the Chain Whirler again. I don't think I can cast it soon. We draw the Stomping Ground. All right, I'm going to go for the Pelt Collector. If there's another Clarion or a Wrath, I know I'm getting punished badly, but I don't think I can possibly win this game sitting back. I just think that if I sit back, I will die anyway. And there's the Chemist's Insight. Let's see if it's another Sweeper. It's not. But it could be a Settle the Wreckage, which is also very scary. So let's go for a Gruel Spellbreaker, which can interrupt a Settle the Wreckage rather brutally. And give it haste. We're just trying to sneak that damage through. Now remember, I cannot be the target of spells, therefore no settle. So let's slam. Down to seven. With a lightning strike in the hand. Can we figure out a way through this? Lyra Dawnbringer is very scary. So I might have a way. If the opponent blocks here, I can Lightning Strike my own creature, which will pump my Pelt Collector and bring my opponent to exactly lethal. Let's say that again. This is a first strike creature. If it blocks the Spellbreaker, the opponent will gain five life if damage happens. But if instead I Lightning Strike my own creature, they will not gain that life. It has to exactly be the Spellbreaker too, because it has to pump the Pelt Collector. Well, no it doesn't, because then we can if we don't, then that means the Spellbreaker is unblocked. But this is going to be a really cool play. Not everybody sees plays like these. So if you just watch me casually, tune in. We can up your game, friends. Exactly lethal. Oh, that feels good. Well, that was uh, a glorious set of battles, and it leaves us right on the cusp of gold rank one, which is very exciting. The Topples Jun deck seems to have game against a wide variety of decks on the ladder, and there seems to be a wide variety of decks on the ladder right now, so perhaps you're going to want to pick up Jamie's Mythic Invitational list and go terrorize some Jeskai, Sultai, Gates, and uh, other assorted stuff. As far as the mono red matchup and as far as the mono blue, mono white matchup, I would guess that white is the hardest as you have to have almost exactly the chain whirler combo to compete. And red is always a bit tough, but the amount of beef this deck puts out can probably hang pretty well. I also think it would do well racing with the mono blue deck, though I haven't been able to test it much. But I, I like the Warriors build. I've been playing kind of a mid rangier grindier version of the deck, but just having those gutter bones and pelt collectors to get in there and keep the opponent under so much pressure, it's been pretty sweet. And I strongly recommend you play it. Also, Jamie Topples is a streamer. Please do check out her stream. She was one of the, um, as far as like concurrent viewer count goes, she was pr one of the smallest streamers invited to the event. And it's great to see her now uh, going from about 30 to 40 viewers to seeing her with over 100 viewers since the Invitational. She usually drafts and she's a very delightful human. If you saw that clip I put on Twitter, she's the one I was sitting next to who had tears in her eyes after the War of the Spark trailer was aired. And uh, I just, I, I think that she's a fabulous human being and you should go drop her a follow on Twitch and tell her CGB says hi. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. 
Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.